Hey class, so this video is going to go over on how to do a NEMA 2000 field connector. So we would use these in place in a place where we had to cut a connector off because it wouldn't fit through a hole and we needed to cut the connector off to fit just the bare wire through, kind of like this guy. So let's say we had a small hole that connector would not fit through but that will cut the connector off and then we can feed that through the hole. We want to make sure we take note of which connector we cut off. Um, here's my other end. So we see that this is a male connector. So when we put the field connector on, we want to make sure our field connector is male as well. So what I have here is a field connector made by Maritron. Uh, on the bag, it does give you some instructions. Uh, I actually don't follow them because the main difference is where it says in number four, leave the center blue wire for last. I actually don't agree with that. It's a lot easier if you do it actually towards the beginning. Um, tools that you might need are wire cutters and strippers, a little razor blade knife, and a small flathead screwdriver. All right, I'm going to show you how this is done. So we're going to take our wire and what we want to do is make sure we know how long. They say to cut 20 millimeters off, but what I like to do is just our wire is going to go up to the top of this connector here. So if I put my barrel over it, then I know we don't really want the uninsulated wire sticking up the back of this. So as long as I everything is still within this main barrel here, we're all right. So we'll cut off like an in three quarters of an inch to an inch. If we make it too short, it ends up being really hard to move our wires and get them in these small holes uh, on our connector here. Before we cut the insulation though, we wanna put our re our, uh, our, our first piece here on. Make sure the threads are facing up towards your cut wire. And then you want to put on this little uh, cable restraining clamp, little bl white plastic piece. That'll go over. And then you have a choice of two See if you can see those, you'll have a choice of two different uh, O-rings that help waterproof the connector. One is a little bit smaller inner circle and the other one's a bigger. This is good for micro cable and this is good for mid cable. Since we're using micro, we'll use the smaller one. So we'll slide this over. It's a little tight, so but it, it goes on if you pull it down. And then last but not least, we'll take this barrel cover here and put that over. So, as we're saying, kind of make our measurement here where we're going to cut our wire. We know it's going to go basically to the top of this. And we want to come in just a little bit, so about an inch. Okay. And then we'll carefully, there are uh, four to five wires in there. So we want to make sure we have a nice flush edge. Come back, back, back an inch, and we're going to cut carefully through this outer insulation. We want to make sure we're not cutting into that inner insulation, though. And as we cut, you'll see that there's this inner wire braid. So we're going to peel that back and actually what we can do is just cut that a pair of uh, wire cutters flush cutters kind of would be helpful as well 
But that we can kind of just cut back to where it comes out of the outer insulation. I like to do this, if I'm on a boat, I like to do this over a towel because all these little wire pieces go every which way and it sucks to have to vacuum it up out of carpet. So just a little tech tip, save your time in the cleanup. But since I'm in a shop here, I'm not gonna worry about it as much. That's what vacuums are for. Okay, so now we see we have basically some tin foil uh, around two sets of wires. Now, when you're cutting back that, that braid, we need to make sure we do not cut back the center bare conductor. This is what we call our drain or shield wire. It basically helps with uh, minimizing EMI or electronic interference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel back the foil on these two sets of wires. Sometimes you might need to just make a little cut there very carefully in the foil to get it started. But once you do that, it should just come right on off. Same thing with the other one. All right. So now I have two sets of wire. I have a red and black wire, and I have a white and blue wire. Our white and blue wire are mainly our data wires. You'll see that even though they are actually a thinner gauge wire inside, they look thicker because they have a lot more insulation over them. It's basically to help uh, minimize interference as well. All right. Oops. Forgot to put that back on. Fortunately, this barrel will go back over without any problems there. So what I like to do, because this drain wire can be a little bit problematic sometimes, that guy right there, I actually like to start with him. And you'll see on my on the connector, sorry if it's not easy to see, but it's actually color coded. You have white, you have gray, which is your shield, you have a red one for your red cable and a black one, and then the center conductor is blue for your blue wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in my shield wire first. Okay, and that's where you use your little flathead screwdriver and you're gonna screw that in. Now, let's see, my wires are just a little bit long. They're kind of just overlapping my barrel a little bit. Let's see if I switch them. They probably actually will be all right, but if you wanted to, if they're especially if they were a lot longer for some reason, you could uh, trim them down a little. Our blue wire, we actually will be trimming because it needs to go in the center barrel here that doesn't go all the way up. So we actually need to trim it to the base of this black part and then it'll go in that middle connector. Now, unlike our ethernet connectors, we do have to strip the ends off of these wires to go into our little uh, connectors in there. So I'm gonna start with the blue one because in my opinion, it's the hardest. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip off just about a eh, quarter inch, I think. It doesn't have to be much. It just needs to make contact with the flathead screw that goes in. We're gonna bend this one in carefully. Try to get those wires to stay together. Okay, we're in. Okay, you can kind of see I now have my blue one in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just strip off a quarter inch of the remaining three wires.
Okay, so there's our white, so we'll start there. Let me just push these in. Okay, and once you got it in the hole there, we'll screw it down. Okay, our next one will be black. And finally our red one. The nice things with these connectors, if you screw up, you can easily just take them back out, cut a little bit more off, and redo it. The connectors themselves are reusable. Okay, so we'll screw down our last one here. So now you can see we have our four wires and our drain. Now, whoops. So you can see our drain wire comes up against this blue screw. It's kind of hard to see, but one of the things that we do like to do is to push, put a little bit of heat shrink over that drain, that bare drain shield wire um, before we put it in. I don't have any of that, the heat shrink with me right now, so that's why I didn't do it. But if by putting the heat shrink over that uh, shield wire, it keeps it from hitting this um, data wire, which could then uh, put power through that uh, shield wire, which we don't want. So just a little tech tip, use heat shrink on that drain wire to keep it from uh, rubbing up against or making contact with that screw from the blue inner barrel. Okay, so what I like to do is just kind of give each side a little tug just to make sure that they're not coming out. No, okay, we're good there. And now we will put our big center barrel and we just make sure we get our threads lined up and screw that one over till it stops. It is plastic, so don't force it. Then our black grommet, we're gonna move down, which can be sometimes difficult. Okay, push it up in there as much as we can. Then we're gonna take our plastic strain relief and get that inside there as well. And then finally, we'll take our retaining nut here and we'll kind of push that gasket and that retaining plastic retaining clip in a little bit more. And then we'll screw this retaining nut down. This retaining nut does not need to be all the way flush against the, the main barrel here. You will have thread sticking out. But hand tighten it. And we have a field connector. So that's a NEMA 2000 field connector. You can see there where the strain relief and then the little gasket, hopefully, uh, you can see it, um, provides a nice watertight connection. One thing you can do with these, I, uh, we tried this out last in last year's class, is you can use a ferrule crimper. Um, it makes your connections within within the field connector uh, a bit a bit cleaner. Um, so that is an option if you want to. Um, I know they do have them in the lab, so feel free to give that a try if you so choose. Um, but I've been doing it for several years with just the bare wires and they seem to work fine as well. All right. Thanks guys.